Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes Long, I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today's tutorial is all about lighting and shadow. So if you have been a follower and a subscriber to my channel, you will know that I have the guided class recently and since the launch of my guided class, I've received a few students and these students have the same common problem actually. So the same problem was like, they were asking me why do my portrait look flat and also why does my shadow looks weird and then where do you place the shadow zones? So those are some of the questions that my student asked and I realized that I've never ever actually made a tutorial regarding shadow zones and lighting zones so today would be the first time I'm doing this tutorial and if you are one of those people who are wondering that your portrait is looking flat and how to fix problems like this then this is the right tutorial for you so the reason why your portrait looks flat actually have two reasons the first reason is we do not have a very complete understanding of lighting and shadow the complete basics and the technique behind it and also we are <coughs> And also, my kitten is falling. Care? <laughs> okay. And also, the second reason would be the choice of photo that you're picking when you are painting. So, the photo that you pick when you paint are very, very important. And if you take a look here, this is a photo that I've taken in selfie mode using portrait mode in my iPhone. And I have a side lighting. So, if you look here, the shadows are not very attractive because I have very average features. And because of that, it is not a very attractive portrait. So, I was thinking, let me make it better. So, I'm going to move the lighting to the front. And because of that, the, the portrait looks a bit better now. There's not many harsh shadows anymore. And I look slightly better right now. But the information on all the shadow zones are all gone. Completely gone by now, okay? And I'm still thinking, this is not good enough. Let's get even better so i'm taking out my iphone and i'm using the filter photography app and i'm gonna take a photo of myself using this filtered app and now i'm definitely looking better but then right now there is no lighting or shadow information anymore and if i were to paint this i have no information to go with and as a result my painting will look completely flat so this is why most of you who have been picking photos from beautiful selfies out there this is one of the reasons why especially if the photo were taken using flash photography that's even worse because the lighting is really harsh and the tint of the color is really really bad and there's no information at all so today we will address all these issues and try and learn more about shadows and lighting so to start with today's tutorial all you have to do is go to my website and download the project called light and shadow project and you can also download the bundle in which includes the smudge pack and also so some of the other portrait brush packs as well and once you have downloaded this project and loaded into procreate we can then begin our tutorial today so let's get started once you've launched the project in procreate this is what you will see you will see a layer with 12 heads with various lighting and then in the layers you can see that this is named as reference and if you turn on the original group, you will see that inside as a hair and there's also a portrait here. So this is actually a front lighting portrait. There is not much definition here. And this is something for you to keep and use in case you need to play around with it. Now if you look at the answers group on top of the reference layer, you will see that there's a block in here already and this is actually the answer. So if you are stuck doing any step in this tutorial, you can refer to this. Same goes for the practice group, there are already answers group within them that you can turn on to see the answers already. Remember that for every layer group, you can tap on the arrow to expand them to see all the layers inside. Now that we've gone through all the layers in this project file, we are finally ready to begin our exercises and tutorial today. For the first exercise, turn on the reference layer and then make a new layer above it. Then using the sketch brush from the portrait brush pack, just sketch in the shape of the shadows as you see it. All I'm doing is using the sketch brush to paint and then using the flat brush smudge to smudge if I want to soften the edges. 
For your painting, don't forget to look at the red arrows. This shows the direction of the lighting. For example, this one comes from the left side. For this next one, this one comes from the top left corner and this is a very good lighting position as it shows the profile of the portrait very beautifully. So remember to memorize this particular shadow pattern. In fact, you should just memorize all of these shadow patterns. There's just 12 of them and once you've memorized them, it's really really easy when you do portraits later on. This one with the lighting coming from the bottom is typically used in horror movies to create a very um, scary feeling. The lighting for the second row is a bit rare and doesn't occur very frequently but you should still memorize all of these patterns just in case. For the last row, just finish everything up for the shadow patterns but leave the frontal lighting because I'm going to give additional instructions now. The front lighting portrait is actually the most important portrait shadow pattern that you have to memorize because there's so many photographs out there that's taken with this lighting and but you can see here there's no shadows to be seen at all so everything is super subtle and I will give instruction later on in the next session to show you how I'm gonna do this but for now just do a faint shadow and try to find as many shadows as possible for this front lighting Back to the back lip portrait, it's actually fine to completely color over the shadow areas and leave just the rim light. The rim light on the edges is a very signature look for every back lip um, portrait. This shouldn't take long and once you're done, you'll have something like this. So if you are confused, you can always refer to the answers that's included in the project file. And remember that when you're doing a portrait and your portrait have a bad shadow shape, you can always substitute that shape with the ones here. And now we'll move on to the second lesson. If you have memorized all the shapes, then good for you. But if you haven't, you can always load a copy of the reference in your Photos app and put it next to your Procreate app. Now you're going to hide all layers by unchecking them and then you're going to leave the face checked so that the face layer is visible and then you're going to make a new layer on top of this face layer. Now let's work on the first face and load the photo side by side so that we can see the shadows properly. To help you work more efficiently, you can tap on the selection tool and then tap on save and load and then after that just pick on the selection that selects this face. So now you can see that the face is all selected and when you paint over, you will not go over the borders at all. As usual, you just use the sketch brush and the smudge tool to do the shadows but this time please make it more detailed. Now the reason why you're doing this all over again is because they have very different faces and then you can apply the patterns that you've learned earlier on onto this brand new face but make sure you adapt the shadow shapes to this new face so this can help you in adapting um, shadow shapes for any sorts of face whether they are pretty or they are not attractive so you can use these shapes to make them look more attractive or to go for a different lighting altogether so try to do this properly because after this, we'll be coloring it and turn it into a real shadow. And now I'll show you a quick method on how to do this shadow blocking. First, go to the selection tool and tap on save and load and then tap on the selection that selects the heads. Then pick the sketch brush and sketch in any solid shapes first. Now you can pick the airbrush and use it to quickly block in big shapes. I'm actually doing the top lighting for this one. You can also use this same brush to do soft shadows. Switch back and forth between the sketch brush and the airbrush for hard edges and soft edges. Use the flat brush smudge in the smudge tool to blend the shapes. Now that you know about the shadow pattern, it's very important for you to blend within the group of the shadow pattern. Do not accidentally blend out. And of course, you can use the eraser tool to erase away highlights. So you can use the airbrush or the sketch brush in the eraser tool. Once you're done with the eraser, you can switch back to the flat brush smudge and blend the erased areas. For the finishing touch, use the eraser tool to erase away some rim light so that it's more defined. Once you're satisfied with the shadow shapes and it looks pretty clear to you, then it's time to move on to another lighting. You can use this method to complete the first and second row of heads. Once you're done, we'll move on to the last row which has a lot of backlit lighting. 
for the bad lid lighting, you can just use the airbrush to paint the whole face but use a very very light touch so that you can still see a slight faint outline of the face features. Then by loading the sketch brush in the eraser tool, you can erase away all the rim lights for the back lid lighting. Don't forget you can change to the airbrush for soft highlights. And then you can use the flat brush smudge to smudge and smoothen everything out. Backlit lighting are really simple and easy to do but they have such great impact on the portrait itself. Finish the rest of the backlit portraits and we will proceed to our last one which is the frontal lighting portrait. As I've mentioned earlier before, the frontal lighting is really important because it's a majority of the photos out there. So if you see here, the left side is a template that I've prepared for you to practice the frontal lighting. And on the right side and all the other heads are actually a depiction of the frontal lighting. So you just have to try and follow the zones here. For now, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the frontal lighting so just watch very very carefully and memorize all the steps because you're going to be using these exact same steps for every portrait that you do if they do not have a proper lighting scheme. Using the airbrush, shade the top of the head. Erase away the shading at the ears. Shade the left and right side of the neck. Erase away the parts that touched the face. Now use the selection tool and select the neck, tap on remove. Now select the ears and tap remove for both ears. Shade the sides of the face and now shade the cheekbones. Then shade the bottom jaw. Now shade the lower jaw next to the lips. Using a small brush, shade right below the lips. At any time, you can use a smudge tool to clean up and or blend areas. Shade the sides of the nose and between the brows. Shade the cupid's bow and now reshade the lower jawline to make it darker. Use a sketch brush to add a line below the lips. Now you can deselect the selection and use the smudge tool to push the shapes around. You can push most of the shadows towards the mouth like this. You can also use the soft blend in the smudge tool in order to get a softer blending. Remember to practice this technique often because this will be your base shading technique for frontal lighting or any portrait in general. And that's it, you have done the blocking for the frontal lighting. Now we've completed all the shading for this practice round and we are ready to turn it into a shadow layer. To do that, just tap on this blocking layer and tap on alpha lock. Then pick the color picker tool and pick a color somewhere near here. Now just color the entire layer with this color first. Then go back to this layer and tap the end icon and then we're going to choose multiply from this list. Now you can see that our shadows are instantly created for us. And now we're going to move on to the next lesson which is to make highlights for our heads. So we're going to make a new layer above the shadow layer. Make sure that you are still using the same exact color that you used just now for the shadow. Now tap on the end icon for this new layer and we'll pick add this time. Now just use the airbrush or the sketch brush to quickly block in the highlights. When you're ready, just use the smudge tool to smudge the highlights. Here I'm trying to match lighting for the side lighting coming from the left side. Okay, I'm done with the first one. But if you take a look here, I'm going back to the same layer and tapping on the A icon right now. And I'm picking screen instead of add. And you'll notice that the highlights are a lot more natural. But I'm going to stick back with add for this tutorial because it's easier for you guys to see through uh, my camera for now. Um, but for the final result, you should always use screen for the natural highlights. And now to show you the others, this is the lighting from the top left, the top right, from the right, from the bottom right, from the bottom, from the top, from the left bottom. And then you can see that this is all the natural lighting done in screen mode. For the bottom layer, all the back lighting can be done in add mode, so make a new layer for this and make sure it's in add mode. 
So if you see here, if the backlit lighting is done in Ad mode, it looks a lot more vibrant. And this is the effect that we want. It's less vibrant when it's in screen, so let's make sure that this is in Ad mode. And check out the example in the project file itself of the ones that I've already did and compare it while you're doing your practice. So now we have done everything except for the front lighting, which I will share how to do it right now. To finish off the frontal lighting, go back to your shadow layer and select it and then pick a reddish color from the ear or the lips. Now we're going to use this reddish color to color the cheeks. You can refer to the original portrait for um, inspiration on how to color the shading here and what color to use. Pick a darker brown and then go back to the highlights layer that is on add mode and then use the sketch brush to sketch in some highlights. You can use the skin brush to put in some highlights on the cheeks. And if you want more contrast, you can pick a color from the ear using the sketch brush and then darken the jawline. Remember to do this step in your shadow layer. An optional choice here, you can also use the freckles brush and put in some freckles on the face using the same dark color. But make sure that you do this on another layer. Now that we are done, let's go ahead and turn on the hair layer and zoom out and see our results. Our light and shadow project is finally over and with the hair turned on, you can see your final results here. The hair is not the correct lighting, so the hair is an additional challenge for you to take on. So if you want to take on the hair challenge, just continue watching this video. To begin working on the hair, we're going to slide left to duplicate it twice. So we have two layers and one of them, we're going to set it to multiply blending mode. And the last one, we're going to set it to add blending mode. So now we have a total of three layers for the hair. One is in add, one is in multiply and one is in normal. So we're going to rename the one in multiply to hair shadow. And the one using the add mode, we're going to rename it to hair highlights. Then we're going to tap on it and alpha lock both of the layers. Tap on the hair shadow layer and then we'll paint this entire layer white. This is how it should look like when you expand the layer panel. You can see it's in white. Now tap on the highlights layer and we'll paint this entire layer black. We are finally ready to begin working. Now tap on the hair shadow layer to begin working. To start, use the color picker tool and pick somewhere in between the mid tones to get a light brown. And we'll use this brown to add in shadows using the airbrush. We're going to start with the backlit portrait first. So for the backlit portrait, I'm just avoiding these outer edges for the total backlit portrait. For the other two backlit portraits, just avoid the side that the light is coming from. For the second row, we can quickly block in the shadow shapes diagonally for the lower left lighting. And for the one lit from the top, we can just quickly shade the bottom parts of the hair. Just work big and don't worry so much about the details. For the first row, do the same thing. It should be even easier because it's all just side lighting. Also take note that the front lighting here, then you don't have to do anything to it because it's already done. And when you're done, you're going to have something like this. Now we're going to proceed quickly to the highlights layer for the hair. So let's pick the highlights layer for our final lesson of the day. Let's start with the back lip portrait again and use the hair brush this time to put highlights at the rim of the hair. Just use any brown for now, we will change it later on. When you're done with the first one, tap on the adjustment menu and tap on curves. Then drag the slider to make it darker or lighter until you get the effect that you want. For the next step, I'm gonna add a glow using the airbrush and I'm gonna pick a red color so that the glow is a bit reddish. Just use a very light touch for this. Repeat these steps for all the other backlit portraits. If your hairbrush strokes are a bit too sharp, you can use the smudge tool to smudge them away using the flat smudge brush. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the hair highlights and I'm going to switch to the flat brush to just quickly block in the highlights. You can find this brush in the default Procreate Painting brush section. After that, you can switch to the hairbrush to add in details for rim lighting. Then we would go ahead with the flat brush smudge in the smudge tool and smudge all the highlights. 
And lastly, we would use the hairbrush to add in details for highlights. Just to show you again, this is how it looks like after I've blocked in all the highlights using the flat brush and this is how it looks like after I smudge them out. Now I just finish them out with the hairbrush. So just to show you each and every head, lighting from the right, from the bottom right, from the bottom, from the top, from the bottom left. If you look here, the top two rows of hair is quite weird because the initial highlights were grey but then we painted a reddish highlight so we're gonna fix this now. So go to the selection tool and make sure it's in freehand, select the top two row of heads and tap on copy and paste. Then you can see here in the layers there is a new layer with the selection that you have just pasted so change it to add mode and rename it hair highlights. Select the bottom hair highlights layer and then we're going to erase the top two row of hair. Make sure that the selection is selected while you're doing this. Then we're going to select back the new hair highlights layer and make sure it's turned on. Finally, tap on the adjustment panel and go to hue saturation brightness. We're going to lower the saturation so that the highlights become grayer and less vibrant. Now go back to your layers and tap on the A icon. Try out various blending modes before you decide on one. I'm going to decide on using the screen blending mode. Then I'm going to tap it again and reduce the opacity to find a natural representation of the hair highlights. One final tip before we end today's video. So sometimes the portrait that we are painting, the shadows are very subtle. To do this, we can just go to the shadow layer and reduce the opacity for a very subtle shadow. So just play around with the opacity of the shadow layers or the highlights to find a balance that you really like. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you have a better understanding of light and shadow. Always remember that you can adjust the shadow shapes and the lighting shapes to make your portrait look better and to look more attractive so that the so that the portrait can be more attractive. <laughs> Like and subscribe if you like this content and you like me to make more tutorials like this. And also comment down below if you have any questions. So thank you for watching. Bye.